Um, Mr. Burgess, you made some quite significant comments uh, last week in California alongside your Five Eyes colleagues in relation to um, state-sanctioned intellectual property theft emanating from China. Um, in, in my memory, at least, it's not normal for you to directly call out other nations by name. You're, you're typically um, more uh, vague about the nation states that are responsible. What led you in this instance to directly name China? Um, without repeating my full remarks in the United States, um, I did say that the threat that we were there, so tech, so merging tech and innovation summit, the protection mm. thereof, um, the threat we were talking about um, was unprecedented and therefore there was an unprecedented response through the Five Eyes heads of security services getting together. This is behaviour that I called out that goes well beyond traditional espionage. Mm. So yes, I've been on the public record about I don't name countries for espionage and foreign interference because actually there are multiple countries mm. that do that against Australia. This one is different because commercial espionage or intellectual property theft is beyond traditional espionage. Mm. And what are the consequences for Australia of this activity? Uh, businesses could be lost loss of sovereign capability. And um, this is a judgment that was kind of arrived at collectively with your Five Eyes partners who are seeing the same thing in their jurisdictions? That's correct. And um, the form of the intellectual property theft is um, not just cyber, but human intelligence and other means? That's correct. Um, is, is it important in warning Australian industry to understand the nature of these risks that you identify China as, as being overwhelmingly and primarily responsible, rather than just generically warning about the risks of intellectual property theft? Um, I think it's important to explain in the case where it's coming from the one country to explain that. Mm. If um, I may, Senator, I'd also, I think it's important to, um, I, if you forgive me, Chair, I'm just, it's a little bit of poetic licence here. Um, I'm aware of the media reporting. I stand by my comments as the Director of Security doing my job. I also note that some of the comments I made did not get the attention that I think they humbly reserve because in the balance I explain why I called China out in this regards but I also talked about my remarks to differentiate my comments from my Five Eyes partners also include the fact that China has a right to be prosperous, China has a right to innovate and we do not trying, we're not trying to stop any of that, we're not trying to contain that. Mm. Um, it's simply a recognition that we as a country have benefited greatly from China's rise and we want that to continue. Mm. But the behaviour we're talking about here went well beyond traditional espionage and mm. that's why I did what I did with my colleagues. And it, but it is important to call this out by name because one of the vectors for this, for example, as I understand it, is joint ventures. Um, and for businesses that are deciding whether or not to engage in a joint venture with a Chinese partner, they should be aware that this is a risk, an that's elevated correct. risk. That's correct. Um, did you uh, clear your comments with the government before you made them? Uh, no, I don't clear my comments with the government before I make them. Um, mm. Of course, I do talk to my official colleagues about what's happening in this regards. Mm. Um, and I saw the minister made supportive comments um, the day of the reporting of your um, speech. Um, so I, I, I interpret from that that the government uh, supports you in making these statements when you believe they're necessary. I can't speak for the government, but I'm confident in my role. Okay.